Okay. Uh, Thank we, you for dude, your pleasure, man. Good luck. Yo, wishes. new friendship, baby. Yes, baby. Gotta come to some shows. Uh, but real quick, we've talked about a lot. We've covered a lot. Thank yeah. you, by the way, for being so fucking open and honest and just crushing the conversation, man. Really, man. Icebreakers. Bro. Um, icebreakers. Uh, we didn't finish, and we just got to know. Once you and Mike start smoking pot, what did you giggle about? What did you talk about? <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> what was the what was the when stony... I first started smoking pot? So you see. No, with Mike. Oh, well, oh with okay. MJ. Oh, I, like, have, well, I, I want to know what the Stony Baloney conversation was night. Okay, was I didn't about. I actually didn't get to tell you the story. You talk about Ninja oh, Turtles. You talk about no. fucking gummy bears. Uh, so it's after the party. Uh, I go to sleep. I wake up. Michael Jackson's not anywhere to be found. Yeah. I'm walking around Neverland looking for him, and a couple of his, his cleaners are like, "Oh, he's in his office," and okay. I'm like, "Why isn't anybody like arresting me or anything?" Yes. Yeah. So apparently, he like told everybody I was there. Yep. So they knew, and I walked, and I. I he was accepting birthday presents, and Michael Jordan had just sent him a big statue of himself. Oh, my God. Because he loved the big statues, yeah. Michael Jackson. So uh, Michael Jordan sent him the, the white and 23 oh, yeah. statue of him, of him, you know, of him shooting yes. his jumper. So that was, he was just looking at this present from Michael Jordan. And then I, I had asked him the night before to get me some weed. And so I go in there, and the first thing I asked him was like, hey, did you get any weed yet? Like, I didn't give a shit about anything else. Yeah. I just want to smoke some weed. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, I got it. And then we go over, and he has a six foot six uh, assistant oh. who was, uh, no, <laughs> six, I had to roll the blunt. Yeah. That's how you, oh, we'll get there. Six foot six assistant, this blonde kid that had like a dirt bike, he had this long curly hair. Anyway, he was, we go to the studio, they, and it was in like a yellow bubble package. And it was the strongest weed I've ever had in my life, still to this day. Wow. And I thought I've tried everything, like weed wise, no. This man happened to find, I don't know if he got it from fucking, like, the cannabis cup or uh -huh. something, or, like, what he did. Regardless, I was like, well, I don't want to smoke on the property at Neverland. Yeah. Like, I'm 15. I said, can I drive the Bentley? I have a permit. I can drive with an adult. And I want to go try to drive over to my old house and show you where I used to live. So, I, and I and it was off of a, a road called Westerly Lane Road. Sure. And it was probably about three miles away from Neverland. Because, I like, when I lived in San Inez, I never saw michael right but it was after we moved out of san Inez, so i was like this is a perfect excuse i can go i can drive till so it's gonna be me uh, you and your assistant and we're listening and i found i found my way home to my old home and the reason why is because i was like when i was like 12 and 11 12 13 i used to smoke here at this one spot mm -hmm. and no i would no one's ever gonna catch us right. like we cannot get caught here and I was right. But we start listening, and I'm rolling the blunt in the car. We're in his Bentley, and we're listening to this song, Can You Be My Butterfly? And, like, he's in the passenger seat. Remember, I'm driving. And I rolled the blunt. We start smoking, smoking blunt, normal. Then, my, you know, Michael could move like no other man in this world, like sure. a robot. Yeah. He was very robotic. Like, just his just head, like, movement. So he started, like, doing, like, some, like, tutting. In the car, there was only holy shit, dude. And he's like, <laughs> and I look over at him. And I'm like, oh fuck. He's because, freaking out. You no, know, I freaked out because like I, you, <laughs> I started seeing something different. And Michael got a lot of plastic surgery done. Yeah. So up close, it was a little scary. There's sometimes. A lot going on. There's yeah. a lot going on there. And he was popping and locking and shit. And I looked over at him. And I went. <laughs> and, like, and I like got up out the car, and I went in the back and I stood in the back. And I'm like back, like pacing the back of the thing. Like, okay, we're smoking a blunt with Michael. There's my old house. He just turned into a porcelain doll. Um, okay, let's go back in. <laughs> like, Holy shit! Like, started wigging out. He out so bad. He looked like a porcelain doll. I had a lot of sisters growing up. That so was like having like some, yeah. yeah. He just looked like porcelain because of the, his skin was so smooth and perfect in the nose and the. He yeah. was just like, you know, and I, he was like this close, and I fucking flipped the fuck out. Were you kind of stepping outside yourself, like, holy shit, I'm in front of my house no, with Mike? No, well, because you get anxiety when you smoke weed, totally. bro. You know that shit. Also, if anyone you know gets fucking anxiety smoking weed with Michael Jackson, dude, I got in high... the middle of the day <laughs> no, at 1 o'clock at 15 years old. Yeah, that's fucking... That's, it was fucking weird. That's make away shit. I feel like, dude, I got so high... <laughs> I got so high once, my friend pretended to put a box over my head while he was talking. He was like, dude, this is going to be just, take it easy. This box we put over people's heads. Take the, take the box off oh, your head. Oh, no, he did not do that. So I can't imagine sitting next to Michael Jackson and being that high and having him start to fucking move and shake in the shotgun bro, bro, seat. He was popping and locking, and I had to step out of the fucking yeah, car. that was a wrap. It was done. It was wow. done. I, and go to the back of the car 
and I think I was so ner- I think I farted a little bit too. for sure. Yeah, like and like didn't you had to like, leave him with should something. Should I run? Yeah, like should I run from the fart? Should I run yeah. that way? <laughs> should I run from Michael? Is Mike like- gonna moonwalk into my fart? Yeah, <laughs> am I gonna crop dust the king of pop? Oh, another thing that happened too at that trip, uh, we were doing a press conference and it was Mike Tyson. Um, so Mike Tyson was here, I was here, my brother was here, and then Michael was next to my brother, and. Nick leans over to Mike Tyson. And he goes, "Hey, Mike, punch my brother as hard as you can." Nice. And Mike goes, "If you say that to me again, Nick, I'm punching you." Fucking Tyson for the win. He I said love that. that. To, he said that to Nick. Yeah, don't tell me he how said, to punch. He said, "Don't no, no, because it, if he punched me as hard as he could, he would kill me." Yeah. In wow. my arm, uh, in my stomach, or not my arm, he probably would break my arm. Yeah, dude. But he leaned over to Mike and tried to get Mike to punch me in the stomach. At 15. He would have, Mike, Mike Tyson would have killed me if he did that. He knew not to do that. Yeah, dude. He knew not to. And he looked over at Nick and he said, if you ask me to do that again, I'm punching you, Nick. Fuck. Yeah. Well. But I love you, bro. Yeah. That's, 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 uh. <laughs> so I think Lamar, if you're listening, <laughs> Lamar, if you're listening, start to fight. You want to throw Aaron off his game, start popping and locking, I guess, in the <laughs> ring, right? Definitely eat some beans and burritos. Eat some beans and burritos, yeah. Uh, <laughs> farting is gonna need need to be, but no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a a, a good time. I'm, I'm excited. You excited? Yeah. Well, you gotta understand. I have another thing on Lamar that he doesn't What's that? realize. I have this man watching me. Do you know what that does? That makes me not want to embarrass myself or him. Oh yeah, extra motivation. I, well, yeah, he's we're I would consider us friends, from knowing each other for almost twenty years now. I mean, yeah. you know, we've seen each other in events or whatever. We're always, yeah. we always go back to right where we were. Yeah. But yeah, that's I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Right. June eleventh, Atlantic City. Fired up for you, man. I'm the underdog. You like that? I love it. I've yeah. always been that. Yeah, I'm the underdog. I mean, how can you not be? The guy's six foot nine. Yeah, Lamar Odom. He's obviously a, 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 a trained athlete, you know, but. I don't think he's training for what's about to come his way. And that's it. And I'm just going to keep it cool, calm, and collective, and just put in the work and do my job. And my job is to not fail at anything that I do. You awesome, know? man. And we then believe also, in you. And be respectful. If I hurt him and if I put him on the ground, I'll probably be the guy that helps pick him back up. Yeah. You know? I love that. Sportsmanship. Yeah. It's just we always respect, need Respect, you know? Yeah. It's just respect. Yeah. You know, I'm, I have no hate in my heart towards the man. But that don't mean I'm not gonna knock his ass out. Hell yeah! So he ain't training like me. He ain't he ain't doing interviews where he can talk about how his ribs are cracked. He ain't sparring with people that are pro amateur fighters. Yeah, dude. I am. He doesn't have Diana I, Ross's cell phone number. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> baby love, my baby love. Dude, hearing you sing earlier was dope, man. We got Well, we will put a pin in helping you write the next album, but that's uh, that's post fight. You got other stuff yeah. to focus on now. Uh, Aaron Carter, check him out. Best of luck, bro. Yo, icebreakers. <laughs>